To access the Mobility House ChargePilot website, you should have received an activation email from the Mobility House to set up your account and password. If you did not receive an email or did not activate your account through the provided link within 72 hours, please reach out to the Mobility House support team to be sent a new activation link. Once you have activated your account, you can log in and under the profile section on the left-hand side of our dashboard, you can reset your password or set up two-factor authentication. In the general dashboard, you are provided an overview of the charging stations at your site, as well as your total load and grid limit. Let's go through the dashboard step by step. The controller status indicates the status of the mobility house controller at your site. If the controller goes offline, you won't be able to see the charging station data on this page, but the physical charging at your station should not be interrupted because the system is designed to retain its charging logic in the case of an internet outage. If the controller does go offline, our 24 seven remote monitoring system will notify both our support team as well as pre-selected individuals at your organization and we will work together to get this resolved as soon as possible. We may also alert you to unplug and replug in the gray power cord connected to the controller that has gone offline if this status is not caused by an internet outage. Next we will go over the charging power graph. This shows the power that your charging stations have been using over the last five minutes. Please note that the grid limit will always be set below the limit your electrical infrastructure at your site can properly handle. This can also take into account other loads if your site has been set up with the dynamic add-on package. With the dynamic add-on package, there will be two loads shown and Fleet load is measured separately from the total site load. Charge Pilot can dynamically control the power available to the chargers based on the site's other power draws in real time. You will be able to see updates as vehicles are plugged into charge or unplugged while charging. The solid red line is the hard limit of your site's infrastructure. This limit can be set lower than the total rating of all chargers on site if the maximum power draw potential of your chargers exceeds the overall power available on site. ChargePilot also has a grid tariff feature that can be turned on, which would be shown as a line of red dashes below your total grid limit. This feature can minimize charging during selected periods of the day month, or year when your site is subjected to more expensive utility rates, or to reduce overall peak load charges for your site. If you need to override the grid tariff limit that is set for any reason, there is a toggle available under the sites tabs in your settings. This can easily be turned on or off, and there will be a confirmation message that pops up. To update set times or limits, or to add additional tariffs for your site if your utility rates may change during different times of the year, please contact the Mobility House support team. Now we will transition over from our Munich headquarters site over to our California headquarters site to go over the charging point status and error notification section. In this pie chart, you can see all the statuses of all chargers on site and you can go into the details section for more detailed breakdowns and additional statuses. You can hover over each individual status to really get a more detailed breakdown as to what each status means. If a charge dispenser does go into error, our 24 seven monitoring system will work on trying to restart a charger to hopefully get a charger out of an error status. However, under the error notifications, you can see more details. While our 24 seven monitoring will email the mobility house support team, as well as selected contacts at your site, uh, we will dive into the error statuses here. And you can see that there is going to be troubleshooting steps given. And these steps do change based off of the type of error being reported. 
you can also reach out to the Mobility House at 650-232-4200 for any questions you have on resolving these statuses, as well as email us-support at themobilityhouse.com. If you have the Charge Pilot Pro subscription, we will also follow up with a breakdown of monthly error reports. Please note that our support team is available Monday through Friday, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific time, except for U.S. holidays. For known issues with chargers not purchased through or covered by the Mobility House, please call the support number or email that manufacturer directly. The last section we will go over on the top row of this dashboard is going to be charging point occupancy. This shows the utilization rate of chargers in eight hour segments over the last week. This can be utilized by fleet planners to more evenly spread charging throughout the week, or can be used to analyze if additional chargers on site may make sense for you. The last section on the dashboard page is the detailed information about each charging point. Please note that if your charging stations have multiple dispensers, each dispenser will be displayed per line. What can be seen in Charge Pilot in this section is dependent upon what each charger is capable of measuring and communicating with Charge Pilot. When a vehicle is plugged in, you will be able to see the live status, the current vehicle plugged in, the current charging power, total energy consumed, and the plug-in time. If your charger is a direct current charger, you will also be able to see the state of charge of the vehicle plugged in. If an individual charging dispenser needs to be prioritized and can be prioritized, you can click on this star icon to the left of a charging dispenser to ensure that that charger is prioritized and has as much power available to it as it needs. You will also see ellipses to the left of each charging dispenser. If you click on this, you will be able to start a charging session if a vehicle is plugged in, restart a charging point, please note that this can take up to a few minutes, or stop a charging session as well. Do note that most restarts will be completed automatically through our 24-7 remote monitoring. Next, we will navigate to the activities section. You will go to charging events and be able to see over a selected time frame uh, various charging details. You'll be able to see overall charging sessions, the average amount of energy consumed, and the total of energy consumed in a selected time period. You can also sort for an individual vehicle or an individual charging point to get more granular details. You can change the time frame by clicking on the dates, and you can also select specific times of the day you would like to filter for. Let's go ahead and make this session for two weeks. We we'll want to make sure to click confirm, and new data will be loaded. These are all finished charging sessions, and you can also view more details by clicking the drop down tab and scrolling down. You can also hover over for more information on specific charging power, or go to the very bottom and download details for each individual charging session in your selected time frame in either CSV or Excel format. Next, we'll go over the Statistics tab. The Statistics tab provides an overview of overall energy consumption in a given time frame, as well as the peak load at your site. For more granular peak load information or more detailed energy consumption, you will need to narrow down your time frame, and then you are able to choose much shorter intervals for more detailed charging. Most utilities base demand charges off of the average power pulled in a 15 minute time interval. Next, we will go to the ID management tab under this tab, you will be able to add RFID cards to authorize vehicles to charge or add new vehicles individually for chargers that do not require RFID authentication. Through this, you would use the vehicle's MAC address to authorize proper charging sessions. You can add both individual vehicles or add vehicles in batches. Under this tab, 
You can also edit individual vehicle details or delete vehicles that are not authorized to charge at a given site. With ChargePilot Pro, you will be able to actually add schedules for individual vehicles, as well as a base level of charge needed to complete various routes. This provides further operation cost savings in areas with time of use utilities and more control across your fleet. Next, we'll go over the settings tab of ChargePilot. Underneath the settings tab, you will be able to see various site details, controller details, electricity tariffs set for your site, as well as specific charging station information. If you have admin privileges, you can log in to the extended settings for a specific controller and see the various views information available, as well as fallback values for individual chargers. If you would like to add additional electricity tariffs for a site, please reach out to us-support at mobilityhouse.com or your customer success manager to create one or more additional tariffs for selected days of the week or months of the year, as well as the overall max power output for your site. If you click on an individual charging station, you will be able to rename individual chargers as well as prioritize from this view as well. Before we finish today, I would like to highlight the Help Center in ChargePilot. This contains both a basic tour of ChargePilot as well as more detailed documents. This has a user manual, an FAQ section, a troubleshooting manual, and a link to this training video for any additional users you may have. Finally, there is the logout option down below. If the ChargePilot UI is not appearing properly, or there appear to be any issues, you may want to log out, clear your cookies, and sign back in. You may also need to log out and sign back in if your account access level has changed or you have been given additional access to more sites.